Okay, artists, so here we are. We're gonna start our ocean zen tangle. And first things first, make sure you have your pencil, an eraser, and I have two types of Sharpies here. I usually just use the thicker tipped one, but I have a skinnier tip and ultra fine point also for small details, especially because we're zen tangling. But if you only have one or the other, that's totally fine. And then of course I have thick, Paper, you know, I call it masterpiece paper um, or cardstock. Printer paper with Sharpie will tend to bleed through. So you definitely want to try to have thicker paper if you can. So also before you start with the ocean landscape right now, make sure you have your 10 patterns that you made from the video last week. So you want these next to you as reference. As we start moving through our drawing, you're gonna want this nearby. And what we're gonna do is, we're going to start by sketching the ocean landscape first. So the ocean scape. And I want you to put your paper in the portrait direction. So the vertical direction. And that might be unpredictable, especially because we're gonna be working on an ocean. But I want this ocean to show depth. I wanna see the layers and depth of the ocean as opposed to kind of the horizontal view with the horizon. So vertical portrait direction. If you haven't already, make sure your name is on the back. We're working with pencil first. And maybe about two, two and a half, three inches from the top part of your paper, we are gonna start by drawing the surface of our ocean. And you're gonna decide if you want the surface of your ocean to be more peaceful and calm or more turbulent with more waves. It could be breaking waves. So this ocean itself is gonna be up to you. I'm gonna walk you through how we're drawing <clears throat> basics, but you get to decide the details of your ocean. So what I mean by that is, oh, also your ocean could be more realistic I know my son might wanna draw some barreling waves here and there, or it could be more abstract fantasy. Um, I tend to draw more abstract fantasy types of things. So I'm just not even thinking about it, and I'm drawing the surface of my ocean to look like that. During Zen Tangle art especially, I mentioned in the first video, Zen is a state of meditation, peacefulness, calm, and when you're drawing Zen tangles, I encourage my artists just to let your brain kind of shut off and just draw. Don't think about it. I would encourage you not to pick up the eraser and erase and keep erasing and changing. Just maybe what the first thing you draw is gonna be what you're gonna draw. If you make a little mistake or you want the cap of your wave to be different, then go ahead, erase it and try again. But the more you erase, the more you get frustrated. And the purpose of our art lesson is to get into a state of Zen, peacefulness. So we have the surface of our ocean. And then as we work our way down, I'm just gonna see if I can find the swell lines of my water. And so you'll see that this next line doesn't necessarily have a capping or breaking wave because it's more like the layers, the swell lines of my ocean and yours may or, not, may or may not be the same as mine. So I'm just drawing lines. Now, why am I drawing lines in this kind of abstract way? We're gonna zen tangle all of these different lines. So you might say, oh wow, that's gonna be one whole pattern right there. Well, I might wanna add a skinny line in between these two, because I'm gonna wanna put a pattern in there. So of course, that's up to you. I might show more breaking lines, I mean breaking waves, like the surface of my water right here, just to change it up a little bit. Maybe a bigger rolling swell on this layer. Again, this is totally up to you. How you choose to do these lines of your ocean are up to you. And now that I'm working down closer to the bottom of my page, I might want another skinny one here. And then I might go back up through here and I might just add one more skinny one here because of course, since we're zen tangling, I want spaces where I can put my patterns. And that's it. 
The more lines you do, the more patterns you're gonna need to put in here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I can do nine patterns out of my 10. If you wanted to draw one more, you could use all 10 of yours, but that's all I'm gonna do here. Now, at the surface of my ocean, I'm gonna put a little boat. And the reason I wanna put a little boat is to show contrast. If you really don't want to do a boat, that's fine. If you want to do a sun, that's fine. If you want to do an Eva bird or something up at the top, I encourage you to draw whatever it is that you want to add to your ocean scene. I'm going to draw a little boat in one of these crests of my waves. The reason I'm going to do that is because if I draw a boat, then I can show how big and grand the ocean is compared to this little boat, okay? So I'm just gonna draw this little tiny sailboat. It also makes my abstract art a little more fantastical if I have this little boat in the crest of that wave up there at the top of my page. Again, you do not have to draw a boat. You could draw a little sun or a big sun, a little bird, whatever. Maybe you wanna draw a shark or a fish, but I encourage you to only draw one more thing, and that's for comparison and perspective. So hopefully that makes sense. If you just have the ocean, you don't really know how big or what the movement is like unless you have something you can compare it to. So that's my tiny little boat right there in the crest. Now, moving forward, I'm gonna start zentangling with my pencil because you might just wanna get the hang of putting in your patterns with your pencil first. And then as you get to know the pattern you're working on, then you can move straight to Sharpie because I'll tell you, it takes a long time on a piece of paper this big to zentangle everything in pencil and then to go over it all in pen. So I would encourage you to just put kind of the idea of your zentangle down in pencil and then trust yourself not to make a mistake and go right into your Sharpie. So here's what I mean by that. Let's say that I wanna start my first Zentangle up here and I'm gonna make mine, so I'm looking at this and I'm just referencing which one I want my first layer of wave to be. And let's say I wanna pick this one. So I'm just gonna pick my circles. I'm gonna start with my pencil and then I had some other little dots in here. And I'm gonna stop, because that's enough for me to know that I'm gonna zentangle this entire first layer of my water with those circles. And then let's say this skinnier line here, I wanna do checkers. Now you'll have to choose what direction of your checkers you wanna move in, because checkers move in horizontal and vertical directions. So I'm just gonna come here and I'm gonna add those lines in for my horizontal direction. And then I'm gonna add in my vertical direction for my checkers. And I know when I start to color them in, I'm gonna do every other one colored and then alternate on the next line. And I'm gonna skip to fast mode in a minute and you're gonna get to watch me do all of that so you can get a better idea of what that looks like. So I have my bubbles, I have my checkers, and then let's say that I wanted to do in this bigger layer here, maybe my wavy lines. And I'm just gonna put those in. Now, you might get to your patterns and say, mm, I'm changing my mind, I wanna do something different. That's totally fine. Just let your pencil guide you. But it's good to at least get the ideas down on your page. And then I'm gonna move here. My cat is jumping on my camera, so I'm gonna make sure you can still see, you can. Ever, can you move the cat? Thanks. Yeah. So now I'm going to continue with this one here. And then I'm gonna choose my next one. Let's say I wanna do my stripes. So I just had some vertical stripes and I'm gonna add those in like that. Okay, and then in this little tiny skinny layer here, I might do my fish scales. So I had some fish scales. Your patterns are gonna be different than mine. Maybe you have some the same. 
And again, I'm just putting my ideas down so I know what I'm gonna do when I pick up my Sharpie next. And then after my fish scales, let's see, I have a bigger layer here. So maybe in this bigger layer, I'm going to put my netting one. I had this cool netting. So I'm gonna move it across the page like this. And then I'm gonna go across in the opposite diagonal. And it looks kind of like a net, like that. So I got that one done. And then I have this one here. And I kind of like this more tribal, triangle one. So I'm gonna start by putting in my lines that go across. And then after I put my lines that go across, I'm gonna add my triangles in alternating up and down. So I'm gonna go down like that and down like that and all the tips. And then I'm gonna do the same thing like this. And then I know that when I color this one, I'm gonna color alternating. So I might color that and then I might color this one and just show that this one was gonna be colored. So I know that they're gonna alternate, same idea. So I'm really just doing the blueprint of my page here. And then I have, this is gonna go all the way down on that layer. And then I have this skinny one here. And maybe on this skinny one here, I might do some spirals. And then I'm gonna put those spirals in so I can see those spirals in there. And then the last thing that I had, one of the last ones that I haven't used yet is kind of these dotted diagonals. So I'm gonna put in my dotted diagonals. Now, you are of course working on filling in the layers of your ocean with your own patterns. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the slow paced video now and I'm gonna move into my fast mode with my Sharpies. And the most important thing I want you to remember is this. The layers of my ocean, all these swell lines, I'm going to be doing in my fatter tipped Sharpie. Then it's going to be up to you if you want to continue using that thicker point to do the patterning or if you want to move to the ultra fine. I know for me, for example, on this one, I might do my thicker tipped one for these bubbles and then use a combination of thick and thin so that I can really focus on some of those details here. On my netting, I might use my thin one. On my tribal triangles, I might use my thick one because I'm gonna be coloring in. So that's gonna be up to you to decide. And then when you're done sharpening, all you're gonna do is erase the pencil out from underneath it and that is the conclusion of this week's lesson. Next week, you'll have your paper all set up to watercolor paint. So we're gonna go ahead, switch to fast mode, and see what happens. Mm -hmm.